Hey guys and welcome to another video where I review the JBJ Nano Auto Top Off System. I got this Auto Top Off on Amazon for $99. So the capabilities of this Auto Top Off System are pretty awesome. It actually has a 75 gallon per hour um, flow rate with the tiny little pump that's included. Uh, it also has the optical uh, sensor. Unlike a mechanical sensor, the optical sensor if uh, the water drops, it, you don't have to worry about it being stuck in the on or off position. Obviously being stuck in the off position, not the end of the world. You can just notice that your tank is dropping and fill it back up. However, if the pump was to get stuck in the on position, that could flood your floor and it would be no good. So <clears throat> we'll jump into the unboxing. Uh, again, I got this from Amazon. We'll open it up here. Nice thick box um, and a little bit of styrofoam packing along with the directions um, and there it is. So wow, so the great thing about this is look at that pump guys. That pump is crazy small, I mean that's my finger, that's my thumbnail and this pump is only, you know, maybe twice the size of my thumbnail. Very tiny pump. Um, take this out here. I have researched this quite a bit before buying it and uh, some little screws to kind of hold it to the tank. Um, that just kind of holds it, holds the hose down. I'll show you that in a little bit when I do the demonstration. Uh, this goes over the optical sensor. Um, I believe it's just to prevent like snails and stuff like that from getting all over it. And then this holds the hose. It actually sits on the tank like that. And then the screw goes in just like that. And that holds it to the tank. And then there's another one right here that actually holds the hose in place. Again, I'll show that in the demonstration. A uh, little power cord here. Looks like uh, this is uh, 100, 100 input, 240 volts. All right, set that off to the side. Anyways, um, decent amount of tubing there. Um, I think it's eight, I wanna say it's eight feet. Um, I'll double check that here in a second. And then there's the sensor. Let's see if I can get that pretty good. Again, take so okay that's pretty awesome so that's the actual sensor look at that that's literally the length of my thumbnail is how much it's protruding it'll be protruding from your tank this is actually just the magnet um, it does have nice very soft rubber on the inside so it's not actually plastic it's like a really it actually feels like a really high quality rubber material so that's pretty cool Nice long cord. So we're gonna get right into the installation. Uh, the first thing I did right before this is I actually drilled a hole into the top of my five gallon bucket lid uh, just to creep, sneak the uh, hosing and the wiring through that. Now it would be a good idea just to maybe put some silicone, uh, some marine safe silicone around this so that way nothing gets out of there. And then honestly, just buy another lid that way when you're taking this bucket to and from the store, you'll have a separate lid and you don't have to worry about undoing that every single time. And uh, it'll just save you a little bit of hassle. So as you can see, I got the pump mounted there at the way bottom of the bucket and I routed the wiring through there. Um, and then in the back, as you can see, uh, the power cord is plugged in. However, uh, you don't want to hook anything up to uh, the sensor, meaning the uh, two uh, male and female connectors. Just don't hook those up quite yet. Uh, if you start doing that, you'll have water all over the floor and you don't want that. So the next step is we're gonna install the water sensor. So as you see, the cord at the top is actually the top of the sensor. The reason is, is because the top of the sensor is actually the auto off and the bottom of the sensor 
is the water shortage sensor. So the low level sensing point is right towards the bottom of this black plastic piece here. So we're just gonna install the uh, sensor just like this, straight up and down in our sump. And we're gonna make that just to where I want my water a little bit higher than where it is right now. So I'm just gonna mount it just a little bit higher so you can see it when it turns on. And then the next step is, is we're gonna take our plastic clip that we talked about earlier and we're gonna mount it to the side by screwing in the back screw there. And then we're gonna take the rubber hosing that we just routed through the back of our cabinet and we're gonna put it through the top and then we're gonna screw down the screw just a little bit to where it's just snug. You don't wanna pinch it too tight because you don't wanna cut off the water flow. Um, one important note is that you will wanna make sure that the hose is not um, going down too far. The reason is, is that if you actually have the hose touching the uh, ho or the hose touching the water, it'll actually back siphon into your bucket and that can cause a flooding issue in your cabinet. So just make sure that that is just barely below the tank glass there. All right guys, so the next step is we're gonna install the water sensor. So as you see, the cord at the top is actually the top of the sensor. The reason is, is because the top of the sensor is actually the auto off and the bottom of the sensor is the water shortage sensor. So the low level sensing point is right towards the bottom of this black plastic piece here. So we're just gonna install the uh, sensor just like this, straight up and down in our sump. And we're gonna make that just to where I want my water a little bit higher than where it is right now. So I'm just gonna mount it just a little bit higher so you can see it when it turns on. And then the next step is, is we're gonna take our plastic clip that we talked about earlier, and we're gonna mount it to the side by screwing in the back screw there. And then we're gonna take the rubber hosing that we just routed through the back of our cabinet, and we're gonna put it through the top. And then we're gonna screw down the screw just a little bit to where it's just snug. You don't wanna pinch it too tight because you don't wanna cut off the water flow. Um, one important note is that you will wanna make sure that the hose is not um, going down too far. The reason is, is that if you actually have the hose touching the, uh, ho or the hose touching the water, it'll actually back siphon into your bucket and that can cause a flooding issue in your cabinet. So just make sure that that is just barely below the tank glass there. Okay, so this part's pretty easy. You can't really mess this up. So you have a female end and a male end at the bottom, goes into the female end and the male end at the top of the second cord. You plug those in and then we'll see what happens. Moment of truth, here we go. We're gonna plug in the power cord. You see the green sensor coming on and the water is flowing just like that. Notice as soon as the water gets to the top of the sensor, the sensor shuts off and that turns off the pump. You were probably wondering earlier in the video, but the final step is to take off this cheap $20 Chinese auto top off. It did us wonders, but we go through about a bottle of this per day on this tank. So we're just gonna set that off to the side Actually, we'll set it on the ground there. And boom, all done. So we got five gallons of auto top off water ready for our 20 gallon uh, water box cube. Not really probably gonna have to fill this thing or top it off for, I don't know, probably at least a couple weeks. So if you have any questions, please uh, comment below. If you like this video or if it was helpful, please drop it a like. Um, also subscribe. We're going to be releasing new videos for uh, unboxing, unboxing 
videos of uh, different equipment that we're going to be using in this tank. And just to see the progression of this tank, uh, please subscribe. Hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.